Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. From the time the caveman discovered the fist to our present ingenious engines of destruction, what a long way we've come. And how much further will we go? Or perhaps I should say, can we go? How much longer can our reason keep pace with our sometimes irrational inventions? If these are questions that worry us today, think how much more urgent they'll be in the future. I'm breaking out of here tonight. How can you do that? You're confined to a wheelchair. And this is maximum security. I'm offering you the chance to come with me. Huh? What's the catch? That you serve me without question for the rest of your life. You're crazy. And you're a fool. Because now you too will die. <laughs> Mystery drama, The Tunnel Man, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What are mankind's chances for survival? We talk about the balance of power and the spread of nuclear weapons, but there is another voice at table. This is the voice of nature. We all have our pet fears, darkness, thunder, but perhaps the most terrifying of all is the earthquake. The thought that the solid earth on which we stand could suddenly divide beneath our feet and swallow us is so horrifying we refuse even to think about it. We're in a monitoring station on the west coast. Good morning, Dr. Trilby. Oh, good morning, Sam. H how did you talk over the mayor? Well, the National Guard and local army units are standing by, but he still doesn't want to order an official evacuation of the city. But that's insane. What right does he have not to warn the people of the full danger? As long as there's any hope that the earthquake won't happen, he, he wants to remain optimistic. Oh, politicians. They never change, do they? Uh, any new developments over the night? No. I spent half the night at the telescope watching the skies. Uh, the planets come closer and closer together. And at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, they'll be in perfect alignment for the first time in 400 years. And their combined gravitational pulls are going to activate every fault line on Earth, including the one we're sitting on. And all we can do is, is wait. Well, I think you're being a little too pessimistic after all. We can't know for certain what the effects will be until the Earth begins to enter the gravitational arc. By which time it will be too late. Well, it's, it's, it's still only a theory, Sam. After all, this same phenomenon of planetary alignment did occur four centuries ago without leaving any cataclysmic upheavals in its wake. I'd say there's still room for hope. What's that? The seismograph. But it's going crazy. What is it? I, I don't know. It's a great recording of vibration with with an amplitude of nearly 60 millimeters. Preliminary tremors already, but, but our calculations... No, 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 no. It's too strong for that. What's the depth? It's uh, only 70 feet. But I don't get it. What? Well, look where it's coming from. Transpose the coordinates. The valley? But that's safe ground. It's solid bedrock. It seems to be moving at a steady pace. It... Good Lord. What? Look at the screen. Look where it's headed. Straight toward the fault line. I'm calling the mayor. And if he won't listen, I'm calling the National Guard. It's no use, Sam. If it's the real thing, it's too late. Wait. What happened? 
It, it, it stopped. We've lost it. The vibration stopped? Well, see for yourself. The needle's gone back to normal. What, what, what was it? What, what were we seeing? I don't know. A vibration from out of nowhere, heading straight for the fort, and then just as suddenly it stops, disappears without a trace. Dr. Trulby, there's something else. What? It's its direction of travel. It was moving from east to west, but the stress lines in the valley run north and south. Yes, of course. Now, logically, its natural movement should have been with the stress lines, not across the grain. Sam, I, I, I think as soon as Dr. Peterson arrives, he, you and I better go out to the valley and try to find out just what it was we were seeing. Are you the uh, bank manager? Yes, uh, James Dale. And well, I'm Ron Hankler, police commissioner. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Commissioner. Mm. Now, Captain Airward said it was a pretty extraordinary situation. Well, I don't know what to make of it. Mm. You've been robbed now, is it right? Well, yes. I, I guess we have. Right, well, uh, just tell me what happened, Mr. Dale. I can't. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, I can't explain it. I think perhaps I'd better take you down to the vault and let you see for yourself. Here we are. I had the guards close the vault. I thought it best if no one else saw. You see what I mean? Well, that hole in the floor, it, it looks like... A... I know, Commissioner. It, it looks like an earthquake. That concrete is three feet thick, and it's buckled like plywood. Mm. Well, it's obviously a tunnel job. No, that's just it. There isn't any tunnel. Your men dug down ten feet and found nothing but dust. Dust? Solid dust. This bank sits on hard rock landfill, and it's been churned into powder. Uh, but you say it was a robbery. And there is money missing? Yes. Well, is there any other way a person could have entered the vault? Absolutely none. This is our top security vault. It has a time lock. We only open it once each day, and today we... You found the vault in this condition? Yes. How much did they get away with? That's the other thing. This vault contains over a million dollars of our reserves, but... All that's missing is $10,000. And not only that, but what was taken was in new $100 bills. How new? Straight from the mint, still banded. Hmm, which means the serial numbers are still recorded. And consecutive. A person would have to be crazy to try to spend it. Mm -hmm. Yet right next to that money was a million dollars in older currency. Uh, who else knows about this? Mm, the guard, uh, myself, Captain Aylward, and three or four of your men. I thought it best not to tell the press. People are jumpy enough as it is because of the earthquake scare. Uh, uh, what earthquake? Oh, Commissioner, everyone knows the situation. The conjunction of the planets or whatever it is that's supposed to take place tomorrow. Well, those reports are a bit exaggerated. But, uh, Mr. Dale, do you or anyone else in the bank feel anything? Well, no. Well, then I think we have to assume this uh, robbery was man-made from start to finish. Oh, then how was it done? Well, that's up to us to try to find out. In the meantime, I want your assurance that you'll keep this quiet. And if people are jumpy, there's no point in giving them ideas. Dr. Trilby? Yes, yeah, Sam? Uh, Dr. Trilby, I talked to the farmers over there. They've been out in this field all morning. And? <sighs> Nothing. They didn't hear a thing. Mm. According to our data, the tremor passed right beneath this spot. Yes, but there's nothing here. I know. No throw, no horizontal displacement of any sort. Now, look at this. Even the topsoil isn't disturbed. Yet the signals we picked up indicated a vibration significant enough to have caused visible damage. Uh, now, we've been tracing the tremor's course for over three miles now, and everywhere it's the same story. No one's heard or felt a thing. Well, we, we have got to report this to the authorities. Uh, I guess so. It's madness for them to wait any longer. Maybe everything we know doesn't tell us that disaster is inevitable. But what about everything we don't know? Yes, uh, come in. Oh, uh, excuse me, I 
I didn't realize you were incapacitated. I can manage by myself. You're the manager of this bank? Yes, my name's James Dale. You're... Mole. Mr. Mole. Are you sure I can't help you? I've been in this wheelchair for many years. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Don't be. It's a waste of time. I was tired of walking anyway. I see. Well, uh, one of the tellers said you wished to speak to me about something. I want to open an account. But one of our officers could handle that. I deal with the top, Mr. Dale. You are the top here, aren't you? Oh, yes, I suppose so. I want you to tell me how safe this building is. Safe? Is it safe from, for example, robbery? Robbery? Uh, of course. We haven't had a robbery here since this branch was opened. What about from earthquakes? Mr. Mole, we make it a policy never to turn away a customer, no matter how large or small his deposit may be. Mine is a modest sum, Mr. Dale, $10,000. 10000 I, I wouldn't call that modest. I look on it as an investment. Well, of course, your money will be very soundly invested. You'll earn a guaranteed return of 6%. I had in mind a somewhat higher figure. Well, in a limited withdrawal account, the uh, the rate is 8%. How about 10,000%? What? 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 That would be a, a hundred million dollars. Where do I sign? Mr. Mole, if this is some kind of joke, I'm a very busy no, man. No, Mr. Dale, you are a very confused man. I believe in your case we can make an exception to our policy of never turning away a customer. Without seeing the color of his money? Yes. Oh, but I think you'll accept it. Yeah. This money? If you don't trust me, you can count it. $10,000 in brand new $100 bills. Where did you get this? <laughs> Guard! <laughs> I'm afraid, Mr. Mole, or whatever your real name is, that I'll have to ask you to remain here while I call the police. <laughs> metropolitan area hovers on the brink of disaster. Its scientists probe for signs. All the known data is sifted for clues, even as the feeling of helplessness grows. And then, suddenly, the unknown. A strange tremor. An incredible bank robbery. And now the arrival of a mysterious stranger. I shall return shortly with Act Two. The mysterious Mr. Mole has been taken into police custody without resistance. Nor does he make any effort to deny his responsibility for the $10,000 robbery. But as to how this robbery was accomplished, that he does not seem willing to tell. At least not yet. However, the question which no one dares ask is what connection, if any, his bizarre actions have to the impending doom facing the city. The commissioner of police has sent for the mayor. Uh, come in, Your Honor. Uh, come in. I came as soon as I could get the city council off my back. You made it sound pretty urgent. Uh, I'm not sure. Those I... damn fools on the council want to sound the alarm and throw everybody into a panic over this earthquake business. Uh, don't you think it might be wise to undertake an orderly evacuation of the city while there is still time? No, no. The reports from Dr. Trilby at the Mount Olive Laboratory are still not conclusive. Mm -hmm. It's still not definitely known that this planetary business tomorrow will have any effect on the fault. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have less than 24 hours left. Now, as a precaution, what can it hurt? Hurt? I can tell you exactly what it can hurt. First of all, there'd be a stampede. People killing each other trying to escape, no matter how much time we tell them they have. Crowding the bridges, traffic jams, accidents. And then there'll be others who'll see a golden opportunity to stay behind and, and, and run riot, looting stores, robbing banks. Uh, we have the Army and the National Guard to keep order. Uh, not to mention my men, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner, we've had this discussion a hundred times. Now, what is it that you're really afraid of? All right, I'll tell you. It's that when all the shouting dies down, we'll discover the city's reputation has suffered irreparable damage. People will begin moving out for good. The possibility of a major quake has never been a secret, but well, up to now, the city has thrived in spite of it. And you know why? Because our citizens are tough. They have confidence. They're optimists. 
You just can't believe it would actually ever happen, can you? No, no, I can't. But scientists know it's inevitable. It's only a question of when. That's right, when. A hundred years from now, two hundred, a thousand. Now, look, if this is all you wanted to see me about... I know, no, Your Honor, it isn't. There was a robbery this morning at the First Pacific Bank. Oh, Commissioner, please, I don't have time. Now, wait, wait, I think you should hear me out. An hour ago, we took a man into custody. He offered no resistance. In fact, he's as good as gave himself up. He wheeled into the bank manager's office and attempted to open an account with the very money that was stolen not two hours before. He wheeled in? Yes, he's confined to a chair. Well, what does this have to do with me? He is demanding to see you. And I think under the circumstances... Now, look, I can't waste time now on crackpots. I've got my hands full. How can a man in a wheelchair rob a bank? Well, that's just it. The method he used. It seems to have... Seems to have been an, an earthquake. What? Yes, the floor of the vault was torn apart, and the ground beneath was crushed to a powder as if... as if the earth had shifted. Well, didn't the people in the bank feel anything? No. Well, this is preposterous. I... I don't know. There's something about this man, something ominous. An incredible sense of power. And I think if we ignore him, Mr. Mayor, it's at our own peril. <laughs> in complete isolation. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the less contact he has with anyone, the better. Well, here's a cell. Oh, where is he? What? Well, there's no one in there. He, he's gone. Look, if this is your idea of maximum security... Look, the floor. He's been chewed to bits. Well, he must have had some kind of tool concealed in his wheelchair. Well, there is no tool that could wreak that kind of damage. That's three feet of steel-reinforced concrete. Whatever it was, he obviously tunneled out. I... I don't think so. Well, he's gone, isn't he? There's no hole in the ceiling, there aren't any windows. And I watched you unlock the door myself. What other direction could he possibly have gone except down? But you won't find a tunnel. Well, how do you know? Because this is exactly what happened at the First Pacific Bank. Look. Commissioner, what are you doing? I am digging to show you that there is no tunnel. <laughs> all right, stop raising all that dust. But this isn't dust, Mr. Mayor. It is bedrock. It is solid granite. It's the earth we stand on. Um, yes, Dr. Trilby? What time is it? Uh, 5.57. Mm-hmm. Right on schedule. Pluto is almost in place. Neptune is closing. One by one, the planets are entering a common gravitational arc. One by one, the fields of pull are beginning to overlap. We'll be reaching the edge of the arc ourselves in less than four hours. Yes. That's when the real test begins, Sam. Well, if our theory is correct... The fort should begin to respond with tremors of one to five millimeters, which will increase steadily at shorter and shorter intervals. Until four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, when the alignment will be absolute. And we'll all know once and for all the true nature of the fort we've lived on all these years. Eh? Who are you? Mr. Mayor. How did you get into my office? Your secretary has a very usable sympathy for people with disabilities. That that wheelchair. Are you... My name is Mole. Mr. Mole. You're the man who escaped from the city jail. Who who robbed that bank? Oh, that was only by way of establishing my credentials. Miss Walcott, get me the police commissioner on the phone. You're not a very curious man, are you, Mr. Mayor? My exploits have left you unimpressed. Now, look, I have no time for anecdotes of a petty criminal. I have more important things on my mind. That's why I'm here. Your city is in danger, is it not? Well, there's no absolute proof. I'm still waiting final word from our laboratory on Mount Olive. Well, Mr. Mayor, I have some good news for you. And some bad news. Now, look, I... It would behoove you to listen. In fact, you are right. The danger this imminent alignment of the planets poses... 
has been exaggerated by those cautious creatures who refuse to accept the fact that to live means to take risks. And according to my calculations, the chance of a major disaster is well under 50%. And just what are your calculations? They're worth a great deal to me. I'm a practical scientist, Mr. Mayor, a very practical scientist. You see, my calculations are based on one very important assumption. They'll hold only if nature is permitted to take its course. What do you mean? I mean, Your Honor, that I am also an inventor. Look, who are you? Just how did you escape? Ah, now you are curious, eh? We can begin to talk usefully. Yes? Look, Commissioner, I think you'd better come over here at once. Your prisoner is in my office. On the contrary, Mr. Mayor, you are my prisoner. What? But you are not alone. The commissioner is also my prisoner. In fact, your entire city is in my hands. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, what is going on? I, I, I don't Hello, know. Mr. Commissioner. You. Uh, Mr. Mayor, are you all right? I brought a detail with me. They're waiting outside. I, uh, I don't think we'll need your men, Commissioner. It seems the explanation of my movements has upset his arm. Well, I'd like to hear that explanation myself. Do you know what a submarine is? Of course I know what a submarine is. What kind of question is that? Well, it seems Mr. Mole here has invented its terrestrial equivalent. Uh, a machine that uh, moves through the earth? Precisely, Commissioner. As a submarine moves through water. How? <sighs> oh. By an extremely simple device, the nose of my Earth ship contains a rotating unit 15 feet in diameter. This unit resembles an enormous screw, and it can turn at speeds high enough to cut through even the most obdurate bedrock. And, and that is how you got into the bank? Oh, no. The mothership is far too big for such precision work. There is a smaller two-man craft, which of course operates on the same principle. The blades of the screws are made of a metal compound, also of my own invention, which churn the earth to dust. The dust is then channeled through grooves to the rear of the craft and left just where it was. Huh. Which explains why you left no tunnel. The actual robbery was committed by two of my crewmen and my escape was effected in the same manner. Just how many men do you have? Enough. It's unbelievable. Yeah, sure, it's very clever. But his limitations are obvious. Well, how do you mean? This time, we won't be so considerate of Mr. Mole's condition. He'll have a nice cell on the top floor. I don't think so. Well, why not? Well, because there's something else, something he, he hasn't told you yet. My Earthship resembles a submarine in one more respect, Commissioner. It contains an arsenal. Arsenal? Yes. It has torpedoes. And at this very moment, they are trained on the three primary focus points of the fault that surrounds the city. Do you know what a focus point is, Commissioner? Uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm not sure. They are the vulnerable points of a fault line. If those torpedoes are released tomorrow afternoon, the combination of their impacts and the stresses created by the gravitational pull of the planets will detonate an earthquake unparalleled in the history of the world. I, I, I don't believe this. The, the, the man is mad. Commissioner, please. He he won't do it. He, he's he got a proposition. He wants a hundred million dollars. Uh, well, then that is ridiculous. I have also given your mayor a list of supplies which I will want delivered to an inland location. He's building a whole underground kingdom. Uh, Mr. Mayor, come to your senses. The man's an extortionist. It's just a bluff, how do we know that he can do what he claims? You saw what he did to that bank vault and to your maximum security prison. Yes, but underground torpedoes that can move with enough speed and force to set off an earthquake? Your commissioner has a point. Of course, it's only right that when one asks for such a sum as I have, he has to expect to put up collateral. Uh, well, what, what are you doing? These buttons on my wheelchair are my means of communication with my crew. I expected to encounter skepticism, you see, so 
I've arranged a final demonstration. No, no, no. Oh, it's would... too late, Mr. Mayor. The signal's already been sent. But you don't have to worry. Well, what are you going to do? I believe your window there affords a view of a small peninsula across the bay. Yes, yes. There is a small spur from the main fault, which runs directly across its base. I have just instructed my men to fire at it. We should be able to see the results momentarily. Good Lord. The entire peninsula vanishing into the ocean. Fortunately, the peninsula was uninhabited. Such will not be the case tomorrow. If my demands have not been met and I'm up back on board my Earth ship by tomorrow afternoon at precisely 4 p.m., 500 miles of coastline, including this entire city, will go crashing into the sea. primitive ancestors, we extend our civilization to the very brink of disaster and cross our fingers. And now suddenly, without warning, another specter which haunts us all has become a reality. The specter of absolute power in the hands of a man whose heart is filled with madness. I shall return shortly with our final act. Someone once said that malice can always find a target to shoot at and a pretense to fire. Mr. Mole has found both, and if his demands are not met, he could very well exceed all previous marksmen. While frantic conferences are taking place through the night in City Hall, the two scientists on Mount Olive keep their quiet vigil, unaware that now another clock besides nature's is winding down. It's a peaceful night, isn't it, Sam? Almost midnight. In a few minutes, the Earth will enter the gravitational arc and our, our precise calculations can begin. I've devoted my career to studying this fault. For 20 years, I've sought to unlock its mysteries, to elevate the art of prediction to an exact science. And now, within a few hours, at last, I'll be able to say absolutely what it's going to do. Dr. Trumby, are you all right? What? Uh, oh, yes. Forgive me, Sam. The inhuman scientist with his distorted priorities. <laughs> well, we better go in. I, uh, I just want one last look. Uh, it's a beautiful city, isn't it? Why? Why hasn't anyone left? Why are they waiting for an official edict? Now, look at all those lights down there still burning in practically every home and every building as far as the eye can see. Uh, that's your answer, Sam. Lights for as far as the eye can see. Centuries of evolution and progress. And people just can't believe that it could all just disappear. General Scarbo? Yes? Thank goodness you've arrived. I'm Mayor Gibbs, and this is Ron Hankler, Commissioner of Police. Hey, hello, General. Did you bring the money? Yes, the President authorized this withdrawal. Good, I'll uh, I'll get Mr. Mole. Now, just a minute, ma'am. I brought this money with me only as a last resort. Last resort? General, what other alternatives do we have? I think you gentlemen can appreciate the precedent we'll be establishing if we simply pay this madman off. We'd be putting the entire country at his mercy. The entire country? That's right, Commissioner. Nearly one-third of our population lives in areas vulnerable to earthquakes. Well, there are millions of people in danger right now. Yes, Mr. Mayor, no thanks to you. What do you mean? If you had ordered an evacuation of the city before now, we might have had a little more room to maneuver with this maniac. As of this evening, the President has declared martial law here and appointed me his deputy. Now, from now on, you are under my command. And the first matter of business is to begin an evacuation at once. Tonight, we clear the hospitals and other institutions. The general evacuation, I'll have to wait until daybreak to minimize the risk of panic. Now, the second matter of business is to consider the options we have for trying to stop this Mr. Mole. Uh, what options? We've been able to pinpoint the exact location of this earthship. 
Army scientists are drawing up strategies for its destruction. Well, uh, that's suicide. It's... Uh... Hello, Mayor Gibbs speaking. Uh, you, you might as well wave a red flag in front of a bull. General Scarborough, it's, it's for you. Oh, thanks. Hello. Yeah? But do you think it'll work? All right, good. Go ahead and keep me posted. Now, gentlemen, we may have our answer. Our scientists have been developing a new kind of light beam that may be able to penetrate the Earth. If it's successful, we can then transmit a specific nuclear charge right along its length and explode the ship. But what if the men on board that machine get wind of this? Impossible. The beam's frequency is undetectable by any device we know of. But if they do, there's no telling what will happen. They may fire those torpedoes. Well, their leader here in our custody? General, you haven't met this man. He's crazy. I think that's something I'd like to determine for myself. Who are you? I'm General Scarbo, United States Army. And you want to know if I'm really prepared to carry out my threat, eh? Well, you have to admit it's a fair question. You've been separated from your wheelchair and strapped into that straitjacket. You have no way of communicating with your ship. It's not necessary. My men have their full instructions. Now, look, before we give you this money, if we do, I think we have the right to ask what you intend to use it for. I believe in preparing for the future, General. History began when our ancestors emerged from their caves, and it will end with mankind forced to return to them. How can you be sure of that? Because that is what happened to me. What do you mean? Why do you think I wear these dark glasses? Why do you think I can't walk? Look at my skin. What, what happened? Surely you recognize the symptoms of radiation burn, General? I was made a guinea pig once. I was the subject of certain experiments. One miscalculation. And this is how I emerged. Paralyzed below the waist. And allergic to the sun. I have no choice but to live as I do. Or not to live at all. So you think you can build an underground empire? I am already in the process of fortifying and supplying the caverns beneath your country. Your government's contribution should help us considerably. You have to admit the logic of a general. It's only a matter of time before you all blow each other to pieces. You don't have much faith in us, Mr. Oh, Marlowe. Why should I when I'm the one who is going to ignite the spark? What do you mean? Where do you keep most of your missiles, General? Underground? Isn't that right? Just what are you planning to do? I've been banished from the Earth's service. But I've made the nether regions mine. When the Holocaust comes, the Earth will be your only refuge. But admittance will be at my discretion. You're mad. <laughs> but my method is flawless, eh? Mr. Mole, I'm going to make you an offer. And I'm going to make it only once. We'll put you in radio contact with your Earth ship. You will order your men to the surface to surrender. But why should I do this? Because at this very moment, we are cutting a channel to your Earth ship with a laser beam. When the channel is complete, we will dispatch a specific nuclear charge. You have less than two minutes to prevent that. You could have spared yourself the trouble, General. My men will have detected this and relocated the ship. Nobody has a detection device for this laser. When you travel without sight, General, you realize very quickly that your other senses have to take up the slack if you are going to survive. Scarbo here. What? I see. No. No further instructions at the moment. Well? You are right. The ship has relocated. Light travels in a straight line. And now you'll have to start all over. But you can see it's pointless, of course. Mr. Mole, I appeal to you as one human being to another. Human? In my condition? You flatter me, General. Time is getting shorter. Let us consider our options, eh? Either you'll meet my demands or you won't. If you do, I leave your city in the hands of nature. If you don't, 
We all died. Very well. Obviously, we can't meet your demands and allow you to go. So we must concede you the city and carry on with the evacuation. But I am telling you now, Mr. Mole, you will be left behind. I won't be alone, General. What do you mean? There's one thing I haven't told you. Which is? Before I was separated from my wheelchair, I sent a final message to my crew. General. General Scarborough. What? Oh, Mr. Mayor. It's nearly daylight now. Should we put the general evacuation into effect? Um, no. But we have less than 12 hours. And there's not going to be any general evacuation. We'll all be killed. We'll also be killed if we try to escape. What happened? Mr. Mole gave his crew instructions to monitor the vibrations of traffic leaving the city. With the orders that if the vibrations went above a certain amplitude, the ship is to proceed immediately with the attempt to detonate the fault. But then, of course, we must pay him the money and let him go. That is out of the question. Why? Mole has no intention of stopping, short of destroying all life on the surface of the Earth. And therefore, we must stop him here, even though it means the death of everyone on this coast, including ourselves. Isn't there anything we can do? Nothing but wait. Wait until four this afternoon when the planets are aligned and the torpedoes are fired. And then... And then we cross our fingers and hope the fault holds. But well, what you're saying is we're doomed. That's right. Unless... Unless what? What time is it now? 7.35. There's barely eight hours left. All right. I want a pad and a pencil and a survey map of the area. For the next half hour, I don't want to be disturbed under any circumstances. And, and then... And then I'm going to pay one more visit to Mr. Mole. You're back, General, eh? You've reconsidered? Not at all. However, since we're both waiting for the end, I thought you might like to pass the time. What did you have in mind? You play chess? <laughs> I must warn you, I am an excellent player, General. But if that is your wish, where's the board? Here. What's this? A geological survey map of the area. You have a bizarre sense of humor, General. Very well, I trust you would explain the rules to me as we go along. Who makes the first move? Oh, you already have. And it was the wrong one. What do you mean? The original position of your Earth ship was here. When our laser began its penetration, the ship moved here. Away from the beam's angle, it's true, but closer to the fault. Still quite far enough away to be safe. But you see how the fault curves slightly around your position. It creates a kind of pocket, and that limits your options. Just what is it you're driving at? The laser takes ten minutes to penetrate the ground the first time, but the second time, in the same spot, the transmission is instantaneous, thus effectively eliminating that space as one which your ship can pass through. So I am in retreat. Is that it? Straight toward the fault. The pawns against the king. My calculations tell me I can force your ship into the fault zone in 28 moves. At 10 minutes a move, that's four and a half hours, which will leave us three hours to evacuate the city. And if my men see what you are doing and detonate the fault before they are within its range? That's a chance we'll have to take. If your plan works, it means a stalemate. And the future will be left up to nature, after all. General Scarborough here. Yes? And that new position? Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we've done it. 
They just moved within the fault zone. Then we can go ahead with the evacuation? That's right, Commissioner. Headquarters has already sent orders down the line. Look, 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 out, look out the window there. There's traffic's already beginning to move across the bridges. With three hours, if all goes smoothly, everyone should be safe. And we've done it. We can escape. And who knows? Perhaps the fault will hold after all. Come in. Oh, Dr. Trilby, we've been expecting you. Good, good day, Mayor. The Commissioner, you know, of course, and uh, this is General Scarbo. Hello, General. Congratulations. I, I've just heard the whole story. I, I had no idea that what was going on down here, but that explains the mysterious tremor we detected yesterday. Yes, it was Mole's ship moving into its original position. I'm sure your laboratory has been a quiet place compared to City Hall these last few hours. Yes, but now, thanks to the General here... We're free. Yes, well... Dr. Trilby, have you uh, completed all your calculations? Yes, I, I have. You can say for certain now what will happen? Yes, General. Well? We can only hope that everyone will get out of the city in time. <laughs> the single most terrifying thing about nature is its total indifference. It is beyond the reach of reason, independent of our concepts of right and wrong, justice and morality. We cannot always predict its movements, and we certainly cannot control it. The one thing we do know about nature is the one thing we so often forget that we ignore it at our peril. I shall return in a moment. The brain is like a muscle, and just as some loads are too heavy for the arms to lift, so there are thoughts too awesome for the mind to bear. Our story took place in the future and falls properly into the realm of science fiction, but we thought it best to tell it to you now while we still could. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Court Benson, Earl Hammond, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.